everyone, Anthony here. So the last one was a little bit heavy in terms of Python and stretched out for a bit. So I'm trying to do something a bit shorter this time. And we're going to look at essentially um, connections and, and sort of inputs and walking through the graph a little bit. So what I've got here as a basic rig are the standard types of connections you'll be used to. So we have expression linking stuff. So obviously transform two has the green arrow, which is driving transform one, and it's got the little, um, the green E dot. So you know what's going on there. We've got what are more regular kind of setups here. So obviously the blur has two inputs, the roto and the roto, and the roto here has two outputs. And obviously with nuke in the node graph, we get this lovely highlighting so we can actually see what we use. You can do the control drag thing. And lastly, we have clones. So any of you who are avid sci-fi readers or film watchers will know that clones generally signify problems in the near and far future. And in Nuke, it's sort of no different. They're really useful, but they have some gotchas when we're talking about navigating through the node graph. So we'll get to those in a second. So the first thing I'm uh, gonna use is this blur here. So I'm just gonna, oh God, I'm clicking in OBS. All right, so we're gonna grab the node here and we've got the blur. So because the first thing you might probably want to do is look at the inputs. The node, all nodes have a, in, oh God, in, yeah, inputs function, input and inputs. Inputs here reports on how many things, well, okay. It's actually not how many things it's got connected. It's actually the highest number. So let me demonstrate what I mean here. Let's, uh, let's clear some space, move the horrible clones away. We'll use a switch node. So switches are handy because they have numbers. So I'll just connect it here three ways. So if I ask the node, grab the node, ask it how many inputs it has, it has three. Makes sense, zero, one, and two. If I disconnect two, claims it has two. Also it makes sense because it has two. Let's reconnect number three up here and disconnect this. Uh, inputs has three. What? Okay. So no, it can't, no. So what's actually happened here is that the inputs function, if you run help on it, it's actually relatively clear with this. It's actually reporting the highest numbered input that is um, connected. So in this case, the switch, if we, uh, well, that's right, switch will not let me do that. There you go. So I'm uh, the highest connected input is now uh, three. You can see that there here. So if we ask it, what is your highest connected input? It'll tell us four. Um, because everything's numbered from zero, so four actually means the fourth input, which is input three. Now, similar in this vein, if we drop down and merge, uh, most, if not all, I can't think of any exceptions off the top of my head, uh, apart from groups, which are special and also strange. Um, all nodes, when you disable them, obviously for a merge, it will pipe through the B stream, and obviously on the blur, it's gonna ignore the mask. It's gonna basically do nothing. So generally you expect the B stream to be input zero. So we can verify that A, B, uh, let's do mask, right? So on this node, so it's a selected node and um, the node uh, input zero. So input zero is a roto, which we connected to the B stream. Input one is the transform. There we go, transform, which is your A stream, and your mask is gonna be input two. All right, so that's fairly consistent as a pattern. Generally, you expect the B to always be your zero input. Now, if you connected something else here, so I've got A1 and A2 now, it doesn't renumber them. So input two is always going to be, uh, input two is the mask, so it's the blur here. Input three, input three is the roto node, so A2. So Let's just disconnect that for clarity. So it's basically zero, one, two, anything else. Right. Groups can break that. I won't go into detail of them, but it's because when you create a group, go inside it, it's actually related to this input. So if I put two inputs here, rename this to be something nonsensical, right? So this is your primary input. Now it's because there's a hidden hidden uh, value on this that tells it which is input zero, input one, uh, as I go through input two, but that's a slight distraction, which we don't really need for this. So yeah, 
that's inputs. Inputs obviously have an index, so you could fetch the right input you need to do some work. So you can walk, um, like for example, say you're uh, rebuilding top node, the TCL function top node in Python. You would, let's say we were to connect this here. So top node would be, get this one, uh, you generally want to follow the B stream. You wouldn't want to follow this. So obviously input zero, input zero, input zero gets you all the way here. So that's a very, in fact, I'm gonna, yeah, I might as well do it now. So selected node. So I'll do it longhand. You would actually write this as a recursive function or something a little bit cleverer, but you could just do this. The node input, input zero and you want to get that so that is roto one and you want to get that nodes input zero which is grade one so you can sort of see that you just basically want to stack this as many times as you need to go up to the tree so that that's kind of the guts of top node um, so I'm gonna have a play with that if anyone's interested usual let us know in the comments and well, i'll do up a specific one for that now Another aspect of the inputs is if we do the node input zero, if we give it something nonsensical, like how many is that? Okay, if you could have a node with 1.2 million inputs, you could ask it, what is that input? And it would tell you nothing. So you can put junk in here and it will return a none value. So you can actually test whether or not anything's connected that way. So that's super, super handy. But of course, sometimes you may not want to know that. So if you're walking through and doing, um, let's say, let's just use a merge node again. So with my merge node, I've got things connected. Great, so if I ask it for the inputs, I'll, it'll tell me there are uh, three of them. Oh, it, the maximum connected inputs three, and I could get the blur, the transform, and the roto. If I disconnected, say, the roto here from the B stream, I would need to be careful to iterate over it. So for example, um, you'd do something like this, B node inputs so you'd ask it what's the highest connected input highest connected input is three okay so we need to go through each of them for uh, input number in the range from zero to how many inputs it is just print oops, i'll just print that out quickly print in put number my typing generally isn't this bad honestly so you can see it's gonna give us zero, one, and two. That's what the range function does. It just basically takes from here to here, give me the numbers that make up that range. Nothing super exciting. But then we can change this to ask the node input input number. And then you would do something with like ask for the na um, name or, you know, if the node input number is a thing, print the node uh, input, input number dot name. Yeah. So, um, what did I stuff up there? For input number in range zero open. I swear I haven't broke, oh, print. Oh, I'm still used to Python 2 and Nuke 12. All right, so you can see it's blur and transform. And if I disconnect this here, connect them across, run the same code, roto to and blur. That's actually kind of handy, but sometimes you don't care. Sometimes you just want to know what's come in. And also you might sometimes want to, in, in top node or in the regular node graph, you're not following expression links, but let's see what happens if we do. Let's uh, create another merge, bring them up. And merge two, the mix is going to drive it. So. I have two merges, merge two is driving. So obviously this is input zero here. This is input one. This is input two for the mask. Uh, wait, that's the mask, right? Input two, extra ones. In fact, that's probably a good thing to do there. So here, remember how I said the mask is always going to, these first three are always gonna be numbered the same way. So even if you do this, so just go to the node and do input. We know B zero. Uh, so two, it's not, wait, what? Yeah, oh yeah, sorry, that's correct. Input two is the mask, input 
there you go, and that's the transform. So you can see the um, the input pipe naming is is the same. Now in this case as well, notice that no matter what we do, uh, it's we continually have these things here. So what is the expression link? Well, problem with expression links is that you can expression link pretty much anything. So I've chosen to expression link the mix. You could do the mass, you could put an expression link for any of these things here, you could do the lifetime range, you could do the font, I think, or maybe not the font, the font size. So it can't really number them. And that's where we have to get into the other tool you use to sort of navigate around the graph, which is the dependency call. So let's, um, let's, let's comment that so I just don't accidentally stop. So using the same setup, so the node has this call for dependencies. All right. Dependencies is you don't supply it anything. Well, you do, but so you can ask the node, what do you need to function? And it's going to tell us straight up it needs a roto, it needs a blur, it needs a transform, and it needs a merge. So the first three are as you'd expect, but importantly, it's actually telling us about the merge. So this call here is a more general purpose. What do you need to work? And if we look at the help on it here, you can actually see that it's telling you, you can list all the nodes referred to by this node. And you can actually um, do a little bit more detail. Expressions, link inputs, inputs, hidden inputs. So in this case, let's say we just wanted to know what's expression linked that I need to be careful around. So we can just ask it this way, the node dependencies and it's nuke.expressions. So it tells us it's the merge too. Now there is this, um, uh, where are we here? So it's telling you to do this if you want to look for multiple types. Inputs, uh, that, that vertical bar, this character, it's the pipe. It's, um, I don't know where it is on your keyboard. On mine, it's above the backslash key, shift backslash, or shift that slash, forward slash. I, I always get, I think, shift and one of the slashes, the one that doesn't have the question mark on top of it. So what that is here, I'll just uh, copy that, drop it here, uh, drop it here. So this character here, this guy here, is actually a, um, it stands for an operator called OR. So when you're programming, there's a number of operators, you've seen equal uh, equals the equality thing. So A, one equals one, yes it does, one equals zero. No, it's false, so it was a comparison. You've got greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, all this kind of stuff. This is another one of those things. So um, if you're curious, look up Boolean operators in Python, right? But we'll go into that again, dragging us to other slides. Simply because I wanted to take a step from this to look at clones, because clones are interesting. So let me pause the video and I'm going to clean up and, and build a setup that will demonstrate better.